Mittens Belong Together by Bert Harricade Entz Fuzzy and Flopsy were mittens. Big people only thought that they were for keeping hands warm, but that was just the mitten's job. Fuzzy and Flopsy were brother and sister. They had always been together. Being together was the most important thing. Fuzzy knew that he and his sister looked almost exactly alike. They were both a warm, brown, hand-knitted mitten. They each had a big space for hands and fingers and one little space for the thumb. They were brown and fuzzy and floppy when they were just lying around together somewhere. But sometimes their big person would take them outside on walks together. But sometimes the big person put Flopsy on the wrong hand and Fuzzy on the right one. And the mittens both knew that Flopsy was the mitten who belonged on the right hand. Flopsy and Fuzzy had whispered about the big people sometimes in the dark when everyone else in the house was asleep, and they liked it very much when their big person would put each other on one of his hands and carry them out to the most interesting places. And then later they would tell each other about the things that they had seen. But the most important thing was that they had always been together, and they always would be, until one day. Their big person had taken them out for a walk on a very cold day. It wasn't too cold for the mittens. It was sunny and not very windy. There were wisps of clouds high in the blue sky. The branches of the trees were completely bare of leaves. Flopsy and Fuzzy hadn't been paying close attention to precisely where they were going. They were each looking at little things along the way. Flopsy saw a broken yellow pencil. Fuzzy saw a penny. It was tails. There were so many other little things to see and remember for later. Brown leaves blown against fences. The grass in some places was still a pretty green for winter cracks in the sidewalk, and shadows. How they loved to watch the shadows of themselves walking along with the big person's feet. And there was so much more. They knew that the place that they had eventually gotten to that day was called a park. They had wondered if maybe it had something to do with that place having lots of trees. That was one of the things that they had whispered to each other when they were lying together in their basket and no big people were anywhere around. And then the big person stopped short and took Flopsy and Fuzzy off of his hands and jammed them both down into his coat pocket and bent over to tie a shoelace. And then soon they were all walking along the sidewalk again except Flopsy hadn't gotten jammed all of the way into the coat pocket and after a few steps she flopped onto the sidewalk and Fuzzy and the big person just kept walking away. Fuzzy tried to yell, but he knew that it was no use. Big people had never been able to actually hear mittens because they had very soft voices. He tried to climb out of the big person's coat pocket, but he couldn't get his thumb unstuck. He couldn't even see Flopsy at all. He could barely even hear her shouting his name in her soft voice. He could see, high over his head, a tall sycamore tree with bright white bark shining in the sun. If he could have jumped down, perhaps, Fuzzy could have run back to where Flopsy had fallen. Except he knew that mittens couldn't move by themselves in broad daylight. Not that they hadn't tried before. And even at night, it had to be almost pitch black for the mittens to move. They had sometimes liked to play hide-and-seek in their house, and sometimes they had fallen asleep and ended up separated. But the big person would always find them again. Fuzzy became frantic as his big person kept walking. Several times he had gotten almost to the top of the coat pocket, and then the daylight had frozen him just at the edge where he could just peek over and barely see back to the tree where Flopsy had fallen out. He knew she must have been lying there all alone on the sidewalk. 
Flopsy lay on the sidewalk. From where she was, she could barely see Fuzzy's thumb in the coat pocket of her big person walking away. She began crying invisible mitten tears. There was a fountain not too far away, but no water burbled out of its top because it was winter. Flopsy and Fuzzy had never actually seen the fountain burble, but they had heard the big people talking about it to each other sometimes when they had been walking by the fountain. Flopsy felt so helpless. She soon hadn't even been able to see the other big person any more. All she could do was lie there alone, her thumb pointing to where she had last seen her brother. Mostly she felt so very alone. Flopsy began to cry again. And then, out of nowhere, a squirrel came along the sidewalk and picked Flopsy up in his teeth. Flopsy was almost too big to carry, so the squirrel half-dragged Flopsy along the ground. He had Flopsy halfway across the street when a car came around the corner. The squirrel dropped Flopsy and ran. The car just missed running over Flopsy, and she must have fainted. And then the next thing that Flopsy remembered, she was being lifted up into the air. It was another big person that Flopsy had never seen before. This big person wore pink gloves. Flopsy tried to speak with them, but the pink gloves couldn't understand her at all. It sounded like they were speaking a different language that Flopsy had never heard before. The pink gloves looked sadly at Flopsy as she started crying again. She could see that they were trying to help her, but there seemed to be nothing anyone could do. The big person had then slipped Flopsy over her right hand and the right pink glove. Her hands were smaller than Flopsy's big person's hands. She rubbed Flopsy against her cheek, and then she took Flopsy off and looked straight at her and said something in that funny-sounding language that the gloves had just been quietly speaking to her. And then the big person started walking, but she was going the wrong way. Flopsy yelled as loudly as she could that they needed to go back to the park and then up the other sidewalk where her big person had gone. It was no use. Soon they were in a neighborhood that Flopsy had never seen before. The big person took her inside and set Flopsy on a chair and took out a thing and flashed it at her. Then she went to this other thing that her own big person had at their house and started doing something with it. Soon she had a piece of paper with a picture of Flopsy on it and some marks. Flopsy was pretty sure that they were words like big people used. She knew what books were, and she had seen these marks in other places and on other things. But Mittens couldn't read. Still, the picture looked just like Flopsy. Then the big person put her pink gloves back on and picked up Flopsy and walked out the door with a piece of paper in her other hand. Soon they were back in the park. The big person put the piece of paper on the fountain with some sticky stuff. Flopsy knew that it was no use trying to tell the big person that Flopsy had been dropped by the tree over there. The big person said some more funny-sounding words to Flopsy. Then the big person smiled at Flopsy like everything was going to be all right, and then she squeezed Flopsy tightly and rubbed her softly against her cheek. Flopsy thought that she was trying to be kind, but Flopsy could only think about being together with Fuzzy again. She could only cry invisible mitten tears once again. The big person went back home with Flopsy stuck all alone in her coat pocket. Fuzzy had been trying to think. He had never thought so hard before. He had never had so much to think about before, and he didn't know where to start. He knew about little things. He and Flopsy could talk about colors and shapes and things. They knew what some big things like buildings were because the big people would talk about them. And things like sidewalks and doors and dogs and cats and squirrels. And they had always talked about being together. They'd even heard big people talk about being together. It wasn't just mittens. 
big people could love each other too. After a long time walking, the big person stuck his hand into his coat pocket. He pulled Fuzzy out. He looked at Fuzzy and asked out loud where his other mitten was. Fuzzy tried to tell him, but he knew that it was no use. He tried to point his thumb back the way that they had come, but he couldn't even move a thread. The big person was saying all sorts of things that Fuzzy already knew, that he must have dropped Flopsy somewhere, but who knows where. And then the big person shrugged. He put Fuzzy on his left hand, the right one, and turned and started back the way that they had come. Fuzzy could tell that he was looking for Flopsy. Fuzzy wished he could tell the big person about the sycamore tree. It wasn't that long until they got to the tree. Fuzzy tried to look everywhere, but he could see no sign of Flopsy. The big person kept on walking. Fuzzy began to cry. Soon they were back home. The big person looked at Fuzzy and said something about maybe the other mitten being lost forever. Except that in Fuzzy's fuzzy mitten mind, Flopsy wasn't just the other mitten. She was his sister. They belonged together. They loved each other. That was everything. And then the big person looked carefully at Fuzzy again. He hadn't even taken off his coat. He hadn't even taken Fuzzy off of his left hand. The big person said something about retracing his steps one more time, and they walked out of the door. They walked exactly the way that they had walked before. Fuzzy looked everywhere he could look, but he was sure that Flopsy had been dropped by the tall sycamore tree. And then they were at the park. But Flopsy was not by the sycamore tree. Fuzzy knew that she couldn't move in broad daylight, but where could Flopsy be? The big person kept walking slowly, and then he yelled. He pointed Fuzzy toward the fountain. Look! Fuzzy looked. That's the other mitten. Fuzzy looked again. The picture looked like Flopsy, but to Fuzzy he couldn't understand what it meant with all of those funny marks around the picture. That's not very far from here, the big person said, holding the paper. Then Fuzzy began to remember how he and Flopsy had talked about words. It was another way to speak that big people knew, and that was a picture of Flopsy. The big person took the paper and began walking in a different direction. In not very long they were knocking at the door of a strange house. A big person came to the door and peeked through. And then that big person threw the door wide open, and she took Fuzzy and held him so gently in her hands. She spoke with funny sounds and pulled Fuzzy and the big person inside. Flopsy was lying on a chair by a window next to two pink gloves. Flopsy cried out when she saw Fuzzy, and he cried right back. And they said each other's names several times over, and then they realized that they didn't know what else to say. And the smaller person picked Flopsy up from the chair and carried her over to the door and placed her thumb to thumb and hand to hand next to Fuzzy on the big person's hand. Fuzzy and Flopsy whispered to each other. They told each other how they would save all of the other little things for later, but now they mostly wanted to whisper about love and how glad they were to be together again. And then the big person put Flopsy and Fuzzy together on the chair, and the two big people were mostly talking to each other with their hands. Their speaking words tumbled over each other, and then after a while they were sitting at a table together, each one holding a brown cup in one hand. Flopsy and Fuzzy whispered to each other until they fell asleep together in the chair. And then one day, not so many days later, they all went out walking together for the first time. The big people were talking and laughing so much that they didn't even notice that the mittens and gloves were whispering to each other. The mittens and the gloves still couldn't understand each other's words, but sometimes Flopsy was holding on to Alessandro, the Italian pink glove, or Fuzzy was holding Sophia, 
Alessandro's sister. And then some days it happened to be the other way around, but they were all together.